question is from Lenka Kravarikova. I'd like to hear you guys talk about set point theory. It's been a while since we talked about this. Yeah. Can you explain mm. what it is first, and then we can go into... So the theory says that your body has a body weight set point um, that you know is, is it's set most by your, comfortable. In. Yeah, it's set by your physiology, your genetics. So let's say your set point is at two hundred pounds. Anything you do to move yourself outside of that two hundred pound set point um, is going to be very, very difficult. And then at some point, your body will it just fights you to bring you back to that whatever your set point is. Sounds like a convenient excuse they give us. Yeah. Here, here's there, where... There's some truth to this. There's some truth to this. There's uh, there's definitely a... And, you know, we used to define uh, something like this with semantotypes, right? Mm -hmm. Showing the endo, ecto, and mesomorph, which I know that's also uh, been kind of debunked. But there is some truth that... Um, the, your bone structure and physiology shows that you'll probably land somewhere around here, but that can be. There's a know, huge range. Yeah, that you can, and that can be completely manipulated and changed. And is right. it hard for somebody to move north or south of that? Well, yeah. I mean, it's we we had this kind of uh, good discussion slash debate the other day on the show about is it more difficult for somebody to build muscle or burn body fat. I, the truth is it's difficult to go outside what feels very natural and comfortable. There's for you. a multitude of factors for sure in terms of that, besides just, you know, the genetics you're handed in, in terms of like, can I efficiently like burn fat? Can I effectively, you know, am I, is it easy for me to build muscle? Like there's going to be a lot of factors involved in that, that, you know, we still need to explore. But yeah, I, there, I, I, here's what, here's why I think the way that they explain it though is bullshit because the, look at the average American, for example. The average American, when controlled for height, is far heavier today than they were 60 years ago or 70 years ago. Now, our biology didn't change. It wasn't our genetics that caused us to gain way more weight now. It was yeah. our lifestyle. Yeah, it's yeah. chronic overeating for, it was our for, lifestyle. for decades. Yeah, now. there's definitely a range. Like, like, I don't think I could push my body above 220 pounds. I don't think I could drop my body weight below 120 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. That's a 100-pound weight range right there. I think a lot of people think that they think that they, they use the theory of set point as, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, let's say a guy who's six foot who weighs... 240 pounds doesn't lift weight, so it's mostly body fat, you know. And he's like, "Oh, that's my my set point. It's about 240." No, it's not. Yeah, that's not. There. That's not. Don't blame that on your set point. That's your lifestyle. Right. Your lifestyle is what puts you at that at that at that body weight. There's a huge range, and we did not evolve. Look, we did not evolve fast enough in the last 60 or 70 years to account for the additional 50, 60 pounds of body fat that a lot of people. Uh, tend to store sure, I do think too, like with epigenetics and all these things they're finding too, with like passing on like gut gut biome and all those kinds of things that they do. They're finding new things that are a contributing factor to this whole process that is interesting. But it's again, I, to your point, I do think a lot of people use it as a crutch more than anything else. Well, not only that, but uh, also speaking to the point of being a six foot, you know, three big guy. The the bigger you are, the bigger that range is. Yeah, more lose, more lose, more right. If you if, you, if you are a female and your mom and dad both were five foot three, mm -hmm. and you end up being four eleven or four foot one and about a hundred pounds, you know your range is going to be something like eighty yeah. to one twenty. You can kind of predict how you're going to look. Right, Did eighty you say to four one, four foot one, four eleven. I said. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you're going to be you're going to your your range is going to be much smaller, right? You're going to be you're probably never going to see less than about ninety pounds, and you'll probably mm -hmm. never be more than about one. 30 in that range and if you're a six foot three guy who's you know to what you were saying south 240 or 280 you know your range is going to be way greater it's gonna be 100 pounds yeah. so it's all it's all relative well this set point theory a while ago and you'll see it happen again i'm sure um was used as a selling point so though a while ago this theory came out and it was not popularized because the theory got popular it was popularized because diet books yeah, and diet supplement programs. companies came out and said, we will change your body set point. Mm -hmm. That was what they're selling. Yeah. That's what the, was their marketing, that your body has a set point. Now, people, this resonates with people because for a person, your lifestyle and your behaviors is set. Psychologically, it's set. You like mm -hmm. to live a particular way. It's hard to change your behaviors. Right. Yeah. We know this. We're all high, hardwired in our habits. Right. So here's this marketer that's saying, hey- we can change your set point. You know how hard it is for you to lose any weight, and you and it resonates. Like you're right, 
It's so hard for me to go below 220. <laughs> yeah. So, and, but wait a minute, this supplement is going to change my set point. So now naturally my body weight's going to be 30 pounds lighter. I'm going to buy that. And I guarantee it'll happen again. I guarantee that marketers will use that again, but no, it, it, it absolutely doesn't work that way. The reason why we feel like we have this hard set point is because your behaviors tend to be pretty hard set. This is why it's hard for people to lose weight permanently because it's not that the weight loss is, is hard. It's the behavior change. It's that's so hard. unfamiliar. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't change the way you live every single day. That's a hard thing to do. So if you want to talk about like lifestyle set point theory, um, I'll, I'm, I'm on board there all day long. Right. Uh, talk about a physiological set point. Eh, it's not. It doesn't work. Well, that way. no, especially since that we can uh, change your metabolism like crazy. I mean, it, it's free flowing already as it is. How many clients have you guys taken on and? You know, you get them and they're not gaining or losing and they're just kind of staying the same and their calorie intake is 1,300, you know, and six months, a year later, they've been with me and I've got them eating 2,700 calories. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't change. And they haven't gained weight. Or right. Anything. I haven't changed much about their physiology other than adding a bunch of lean body mass on them and getting them to lift weights on a consistent basis. And we've completely manipulated their metabolism and changed their new set point. If their mm -hmm. set point when they first got me was somewhere between 1,300 to 1,500, well, now I think that same person had doubled it. I mean, that's a huge difference. And this is why resistance training is, is in my opinion, uh, the best form of exercise for fat loss long term because it's so hard to change how we eat. There's, it's so ingrained in our behavior. It's easier to ask somebody to lift weights three days a week than it is to ask somebody to totally change the nutrition. Yeah. So if we can speed up your metabolism, it just gives us more room. And it means that you change your nutrition less. You still probably got to change your nutrition. I don't think I've ever worked with a client that I got them to lose tons of weight and they didn't have to change anything about their nutrition. <laughs> right. But you got to change it less than you would had you not sped up your metabolism. Yeah, just a marketing gimmick.